Hello and welcome to FEM Expert. Today we will present you a basic tutorial in which we will analyze an embedded place statically. The embedded place is made will be made of auto shell elements. We will start with the um, already known as this instance. And the first thing you have to do anytime you need to model any type of geometry is to create the key points that are going to be creating that geometry. So for right now what we're going to do is go to preprocessors, modeling, create key points, inactive CES, which means inactive coordinate system. The active coordinate system is given here. The, the, the coordinate system is equal to zero and zero in this situation means this the default coordinate system that he says that's the one that's presented on the screen. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna create an active CS. We're gonna type here one on x zero y z zero on z zero. The key point number one. Now key point number two is gonna be on one zero and zero. Key point number three is going to be on one one zero. And key point number four is going to be on 0 on x, 1 on y, and 0 on z. After we click OK, we'll see all of our four key points. And after having them all, what we have to do is to create the areas on them. In order to do so, <clears throat> we keep on modeling, on create, we go to areas and say arbitrary throughout key points. You have many other options, but right now we're going to do it throughout the key points. Once we picked up this, you got to pick up all the key points, but you need to, you need to have an order. You have to, you have to go either clockwise or anti-clockwise because the area as, as you're picking it up it gets created as you can see here on this on this demonstration if you select key points 1, 3 diagonally and then, then you go to 2 and 4 you're not going to have a correctly generated area so we're going to go to 1, 2, 3, 4 anti-clockwise I'm going to select OK and now we have our area. If you try to move this, you're going to lose the area. In case you lost the area, you want to see the area, you just have to go to list, uh, plot, sorry, lines, you can see the lines, areas, you can see the areas. And then we're going to give you a little trick if you want to see them all, all those things, it's typing on the command bar G plot. And here you have areas, lines, and key points. It tells you there's areas, lines, and key points. You can see the key points on the corners, the areas not too well, but you can see some colors uh, not on the lines, sorry, not on the areas. And you have your area. Okay, so now that we have created this area, what we have to do is to define the element types for this shell. When we go to element type, I did delete, add. As we show you another tutorial, there's a lot of different elements. Now we're, we're interested in shell elements. And we're going to select a 4 node 181 shell element. Okay. You can go and look, we can go and look at the options here. There's many other options for each one of these element types. If you're interested in finding out what, what these options are, what can they be used for, you have to go to the help and read the help stuff about these particular option. Now we're going to close. So we have the element type defined. On this type of element there are no real constants so we're going to go there are only uh, sections so we're going to skip to material properties and going to define the material model. The material model is going to be a structural steel so we're going to go to Material model, structural, linear, elastic, isotropic, EX is the Young's modulus 2.1 E11, 
and PRXY is um, Poisson's coefficient is 0 0.3 and we're gonna hit OK then we're gonna define a density and the density is going to be 7800 kilograms per, per cubic meter after we're gonna once if for some reason you have a problem here when you get into a certain material and you don't know what this thing means you can always go to the help so after we define this, we're going to click OK, and we have for the material model of the density in the linear isotropic material. We close this. So now we have the element type, the material properties. What we have to finally do is define the section. So in order to define the section, you go to sections, beam, no, shell, layup, and add a de delete. I then did, sorry. On the shell type elements, as is after the version third, starting with version 12 and 13, I think, start uh, introduce the capability of creating um, composite materials. So you can have many, many layers with different configurations and different things. So if you're interested in looking at all of the options that you have, you can simply go and look at the on the help or read about all these options that you have here but for right now we're just gonna have a thickness of five millimeters so we're gonna put a five divided by ten by thousand because we're working on meters and on the name we're gonna go and put plate five millimeters Okay, the material ID and the other things are right. So, or one thing is when you create a little here, you have this section offset. You can have a mid plane, top plane, bottom plane, and user, user input location. When you created a plate or any kind of surface section, the, the, the geometry that you have created will be considered the mid, the mid plane or the mid the the medium fiber of the of the plate that you're cr creating and as it will assign half of the thickness on one direction and half of the thickness on the other direction if your section offset is selected to mid plane if you select the top it will assign all the thickness to the top and if you select bottom it will be all of the thickness to the bottom but for right now and most of the time it is recommended to use the mid plane option we hit OK. So now we, we have defined our elementized material properties sections, but we haven't told ANSYS that we want those properties on this plate. So what we're going to do is go to meshing, and here we're going to go to mesh attributes, and we're going to pick the areas. We're going to select this area, click OK, and we have material number is 1. Real constants non defined, element type is one, and the section the, the, the section of the element is the only one that has defined, plate five millimeters. We hit OK. So at this point, as it knows the this as it knows that this plate has those properties, the only step that, that we have then the next step we have to do is mesh this this um, structure. So we're gonna and this time we're gonna use the mesh tool. And we're gonna try to create to show a couple of other things, a couple of more interesting things. Let's say our plate has a one square meter. On each side, there's one meter length lines. So let's put a size. Let's say we want four elements on each side. So let's go here on the size controls, and we can put set on areas. You select the area that you're interested in, hit OK, and here you have these element size and at picked areas window, and here we're going to say 0 0.25, the size element of each element. We hit OK. We go back. If you lost, uh, if you lost your window, you can go to Race Hidden, and it will pop up again. So once we have done that, we have to mesh the area. And 
if um, most of the times having tri triangular elements in your model might create they they don't create as accurate results as the quadrilateral elements or like rectangle rect rectangles or squares and so on so if you use the free option the shape you can have a three or quad if you have it on quad you can have free mapped if you have it on free sometimes it might create some triangular shapes to to complete the two squares to connect two squares or you can try it to go map and it will tell you if it's able to do it that way or not so we're gonna select map then we're gonna select mesh select our area okay and now you have where you can see here we have our elements and everything is being properly defined so now that we have the model our model what we need to do is go to solution under Analysis type, we have to define the type of analysis, new analysis, static, we hit OK. We're going to define the loads, we go to find loads, apply, structural, displacements, and the restrictions are going to introduce them, the displacement restrictions, we're going to introduce them on the lines. So this way we go, we hit OK, select this line left, hit OK. We're going to select all of the degrees of freedom and we're going to put zero for the restriction. We hit OK and you'll see these signs with the embedment that will appear here. Now, we're going to, we're going to apply a force. A force on a key point. We're going to ha select this key point and this key point when I hit OK and we're going to put a force on the Z, Z direction oops sorry F Z of minus 100 Newton it will apply 100 on each one of those points but it doesn't matter right now we just want to see what happens minus 100 then we apply OK you see these little X's or arrows are showing that the force has been introduced. Okay, now once we have all the model properly done, we go to solve and hit on current LS. Okay, we wait a little bit and we get our solution is done message. Close all of these menus and then we're going to go to preprocessor. Because you haven't defined more than one step, you haven't gotten into the other. We haven't gotten into the other options, the more complex options. If you go to read results, you have first and next set, and if you do it by pick, you'll see that you only have one set at one second with one slow step, one sub step, and the cumulative result is one. We're gonna go. We'll hit read this one, and we're gonna close. And now we're going to plot some of the results. So to plot the results, you go to plot results, counter plot, normal solution, degree of freedom solution, displacement vector sum. You hit OK, and you'll see that we have the results of this. We have the results of the plate, and we also see the curvature of it a little bit. Sometimes to visualize more the, the, the formation, it's good to go to the. Um, it's good to see the meshing while you're seeing the, 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 the geometry. So, you can, so, in order to activate it, you can go to plot controls, styles, edge options. And here you select the edge options only and all, the second option. You hit, and we also put replot. We hit OK, and there we have it. We have the meshing of our plate. I'm gonna show you now how to put another thing. We're gonna go to Nodal Solutions. We're gonna hit Stress, and we're gonna plot the von Mises stress. Hit 
hit OK again. And as you see, things changed. The value that they actually have here, the Pascals. So we have looked at this thing. We have obtained these results the proper way. One more thing, if you want to, let's say you want to see the, the the plate in a more realistic way, you can go to plot controls, style, size and shape, and here you can activate the e-shape option and hit OK. You will see, we'll go, we'll zoom the model here. If we zoom the model very closely, you'll see that there is a thickness on this model. This is very important to, when you want to well, look at some type of results or you just want to see it realistically or to verify your results, to verify your model. Because maybe sometimes you want to see if you introduce 50 millimeters instead of 5 or things like that. So this is very useful. To go back to the previous um, to the previous zoom stay, you can just go and hit the, the the magnifying glass with the arrow. It will take you to the previous stay where you were. So that will be everything for right now. I'm going to go and close the ANSYS instance. I'm gonna close this too. And now you know how to simulate an embedded plate utilizing shell type elements. We would like to thank you for your attention and you hope and we hope you enjoy this presentation. For further for further tutorials, please visit our community and follow us on the social networks.